Okay, as promised, here we are with the core memory for the Data General Nova. And this is, uh, I actually have three boards here. Two of them uh, were provided to me with the Data General Nova that I acquired, uh, the chassis that I acquired. And this one on top, this one on top is one that I got separately on eBay for about a hundred bucks earlier this year. And so, but I realized that I've never made a video of this. So we'll just take a quick look at this. Now this one, I spent many hours looking at this just because it's the first time I actually saw anything of this vintage Data General Nova. And this is the first time I ever saw that artistic looking, uh, you know, curving uh, lines, curving lands, what, whatever we want to call them. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Wow, we're going to have to turn that down. <laughs> All righty. Uh, just adjusting the ambient music here. Sorry. There we go. Back to something just ever so slightly spooky. Now let's try. So that light has a fair amount of glare, but maybe not so much. So, I'm going to take the wide angle lens off, and we'll just go through this. So here. It simply says 8K memory, right there. There's our 8K memory. And over on this side, we have the number for this board. All right, and this is kind of cool. On this backbone thing, this back brace, we have a, a, a vintage correct, a period correct Dymo label. Love these things, 8K memory number 20. Excellent. Number 20. Copyright 1971. So it certainly seems to fit squarely in the same vintage of, you know, the other boards that I have with the exception of the I.O. Certainly within the vintage of the chassis. And so there we go. Now I guess these, these uh, core memory boards Maybe they're more common than anything else because I see pictures of these more than anything else. I see these on eBay more than any other board. So I'm guessing that these are just the most common. Now, something I haven't done and don't really particularly want to do is take off this anodized, I think it's a brass, I think it's an anodized brass plate. It's very beautiful and it's anodized black. It's, um, but it, it, it seems like it's brushed brass. Uh, I doesn't, don't think it's aluminum. It could be aluminum. Maybe it's anodized aluminum, but it, it's brushed whatever it is. Brass or aluminum. Not sure which. Can't really tell. And I didn't want to hold a magnet to it, given, you know, the fact that there's, you know, delicately magnetized things behind it. So I'm just going to have to guess with that. Now, interesting. We have this little sticker here. Made in Hong Kong. And it says DG right there on it. Got a good focus on that there. See that DG? Oh, that's kind of cool. I think it's been peeled off. <laughs> it's, just, it's lost its stick. I wonder if that really is from 1971. Don't know. But anyway, you see these beautiful chips here. And uh, we could start to see some of those very fine wires that go into the core memory. And uh, these transistor cans, I'm not exactly sure what they are, but they're well heat sunk. And I understand that these boards, these boards are what suck the power. And these boards are what require the 15 volts as opposed to the 5 volts out of the power supply. So... These, this should be interesting. Definitely interesting. Okay. But this was the technology of the day. On the back side here. And notice this one looks a little bit more green than the others. Again, it has a double-sided sticky tape, which is also very old and very hardened. And then that magic hand-drawn label. 
Love those things. Or I should say handwritten. And whoever writes on these things, I don't know if it's one person, you know, at Data General Nova back in the day, but they have, they have absolutely beautiful handwriting. So, you know, whoever that is, you know, my, my hat is off to them because I, no matter how hard, I don't think I've ever been able to write numbers or letters that neatly. I've just never had it. It's like it's, a, it's its own font. It's very beautiful. Very beautiful. Something I wanted to point out on the other side. Oh, look, I'm just noticing. Here's one of those plastic screws. So I guess those were standard. On this side, this was what I was a little bit confused as I stared at this for the period of time that I did because we had this little half half circle thing here on this peg and I just didn't know what that was for because I you know never put that together with the cover but now of course that I've seen other boards with the cover I realize that it's the it's the stand the little offset stand for the cover all right well I didn't get to go through this as methodically as the others uh, maybe because I've personally looked at it more but hopefully I've gone over uh, each edge so that you could see the chips if you wanted to I started studying these and it you know, when I first got this, I looked up the chips and didn't find any, any references whatsoever. But, you know, a lot of them say data general. And when I look at the schematics that I have um, for the core memory, you know, they all say that they're the same chip, even though there's different numbers. And it makes sense that they are, because I guess it's not that complicated of a device. There's just a lot of chips to accomplish the grid of memory. I don't know. I'm going to let some of you guys who are better reversed on core memory and how this board works, maybe talk to me more about that ah but I do want to notice look at these resistors they're just they're huge huge resistors and uh, they just look like they could withstand well they look like they still work today <laughs> like they could they could last for a good 50 years and still keep on going all right so I think we've looked at this board well so let's move on Two ones that I haven't even looked at myself yet. So these are the two boards that came with the machine. And this has a cover. One of the first things I notice on the cover is not only is it clean and beautiful, and it has an E logo on it, but it has the Coronix uh, sticker on it. The Cor I've never, I guess I've seen pictures of these, but never saw one of these in person. So this is a very cool thing. That, of course, certainly looks like an, uh, you know, an iron ring. A ferrite ring, I guess, for the uh, you know for the magnetic uh, storage of the core, which make up the core memory. And that makes sense. So I guess Keronix, they would have they would have made this thing. Keronix Inc. Keronix would have made this for Data General. What? The? Who knows? All right. Well, we definitely have plastic screws on here. And so I am going to, here's what I'm going to do. Here's the second board, same cover, slightly different color. We don't have that E on there. So I'm going to set this aside and we're going to focus on this one, I think. Yes, we'll focus on that one. All right, so the plastic screws, look at this. We've got plenty of them, so I guess in order to see this, We'll have to take these off. Now, before I do that, let's let's have a look at the back. We'll just go right to the back. And we'll see. That's a very familiar green from, uh, you know, the other memory board that I have on. This one looks greener. <laughs> the grass is greener on the other board. Okay, that's not funny. Um, anyway. <laughs> it looks very beautiful. There isn't uh, any double-sided tape on this one. Not sure if that means anything at all, other than no one put it there, or it was peeled off before it became all stiff and brittle. Um, but I'm also not noticing the cloth label on this one. So, come to think of it, it does have some differences to it. So I wonder if maybe this is a Data General compatible board, but not actually a Data General board. 